Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a time before there was greed. Um, greed has taken our game. Um, MTG Finance was not something I grew up with. It was not something that I was like, oh cool, I'm going to make a living from this. Or like I would ever expect anyone to say, I'm going to make a living from MTG Finance. Now, getting that out the way, I do like fi the finance component. It's kind of like a game within a game. But, you know, at some point it just becomes too uh, destructive of the actual player, uh, for players. Um, when an EDH staple spikes to, you know, five times and the speculator gets a quarter a card, but then the end result is that player who really wants that deck now pays five times more for that card or chooses not to play that EDH commander. And this happens a lot with commanders. Uh, Kalia, or Kalia of the Vast, uh, check up her price. Yeah, it's pretty high, right? I mean, she was in a, uh, a pre-con deck, essentially, a commander deck, and uh, her price is incredibly high because that's what speculators do. But before then, there was a time where no one knew the price of any cards. This was before eBay. Probably eBay was invented, but we used something like Yahoo eBay. Like, I didn't even hear of eBay until after the Yahoo version of eBay, which I used. It was like, it's kind of like a Craigslist version of eBay, but I don't know. I, it was uh, its own little, but there was a lot of magic cards on it. Uh, we would get a monthly magazine called Inquest uh, once a month, and the Inquest would have all the prices for that month. And then for that entire month, we would just base our pricing or trades on that monthly issue. Or in my case, when I was in um, middle school, uh, in sixth grade, we would base you know the pricing on the an issue that was six months later. So it wasn't even that month's issue, it was an um, issue that had been released six months, no, sorry, earlier. And no one cared about prices, like no one knew. Like, it, when I first started, we didn't know there was rares. We didn't know there was uncommon. We, eventually when you open enough, you're like, oh, these cards are better than these cards. But you don't know, like Dragon Whelp, I've, for the longest time, I assumed that was a rare, um, only like towards like once like the symbols came out of the silver, I was like, oh, what what, what does a symbol mean? There's gold and silver, and I think it was Urza Saga, um, was, or maybe um, Seventh Edition, but when they had symbols to tell you the, um, and you didn't even know what the rare was in the pack. So like, it's completely cr crazy to me that now everything is about mythics and Ubla mythics, which we call expeditions now. When back in the old days, we, no one knew like what was a common and what was an uncommon. I saw Bird, Birds of Paradise, I thought it was a common. Like, I, I was like, wow, Birds of Paradise sucks. And I thought those dual lands were com like uncommons or commons. Like, but like, even the concept of common, uncommon wasn't, and rare, and definitely not mythic, was not apparent back then to us because A, we were younger, and B, like, there was no, like, consistent source identifying like what is what outside of that inquest that comes once a month uh, but this was even before inquest so there used to be a time when Sivian dragon was worth more than the in complete power nine dual lands in my opinion i i unless i'm remembering this wrong dual lands were not worth very much they were worth as much as uh you know as like pretty much the crappy, like Fungusaur, like that Fungusaur card was worth more than every dual land at one point in time. Because that was actually playable. And the dual lands were, you know, they were nice, but everyone had them. And like, I didn't really identify them as rare for the longest time until like, you know, the, you're looking at the price and you're like, oh wow, this price is more expensive. What is it? So it, it came, there was a point in time where money didn't magic, matter in magic, you would trade for what you needed, you weren't trying to get profit, you weren't trying to get you know, trading up, you were not trying to uh, make money from this game, you are just playing because you wanted to play. And that was probably the best time, um, was when beta and then unlimited and revised. Revised backwards was probably the best time to play because you didn't have MTG Finance, you didn't have um, super competitive play and you had I mean the super competitive play was anti that's what it was you could lose your card and that was kind of you know there was no real tournaments there was no real um, it was just you and your friends and I think that's a wonderful time I really would love to go back there uh, to that time where it's just you and your friends in middle school at lunch table and just playing cards and um, I had no idea Birds of Paradise was a good card I used to get them all the time I was like what is this crappy common 
like, yeah, it turns out it was like one of the most iconic cars. I should have kept it. I think I had a beta one at one time, but I must have sold it in one of my collections. It's kind of sad. Maybe I'll repurchase it eventually. Anyway, bye guys.